I'm in Pennsylvania. There's my engine under a dramatically placed uh, blue tarp. I'm very excited. Uh, this has been six months in the making? Yes. All right. Uh, this is Dick Moritz, the man himself. Uh, I've commissioned to, to, to build up the engine. And without further ado, I'll uh, let you go for it. And Chris said that he wanted uh, uh, a complete drivetrain that was plug and play. Yep. He wanted it as complete as possible. And I said, fine, I'll be glad to. So I provided him a five main MGB street performance engine and a rebuilt MGB four synchro overdrive. And here is Chris's first look at his new drive train. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness, it's Christmas, Dick. <laughs> this thing is freaking beautiful. Oh. Oh. oh, yeah, there's a chrome dot to headers. Oh my God, this is beautiful. I love machinery. Holy Jesus, Dick, I'm so freaking tickled. That's great. That's great, man. I'm oh, so yeah, happy for you. Thing. It is beautiful. This is a work of art. Thank you. All right, so. Thank you. So here's what we've got. Yeah. So we've got a, an MGB five main bearing engine, board 30 over, shallow dish pistons, along with, and this is just the highlights. Uh, I'm giving Chris, of course, all the details in a build sheet, but these are all the highlights. So it's a five main engine, uh, 30 over with shallow dish pistons. It's got a uh, 12 H2923 big valve cylinder head. Uh, the head is completely reworked, uh, complete triple angle valve job, all the, the gingerbread, plus the head is ported and polished, and it's milled um, 20 thousandths. So all of that yields us a compression ratio of about 9.6 to 1, which is a real sweet spot for our, for our cars. So, so uh, that's the essence of the engine. So we've got the compression, the head's ported and polished, the intake manifold is port matched to the cylinder head and the, and the Moss competition head gasket. Not the, not the heavy duty, the competition head gasket, which has larger ports. And also, because it's going in an MGA, Chris knows he's going to have to do a little modification to the tunnel to accommodate the engine and gear, overdrive gearbox, mm -hmm. but he's got good welding and fabrication skills to do that. You're being too generous. So, <laughs> so, so Chris, Chris is well aware of that. And because of that, if you'll come around here, you'll notice that we're using... Uh, a stock MGA exhaust manifold to make sure that it that it fits into his car okay and connects to whatever exhaust system that Chris may may choose. Oh. Um, the exhaust manifold is jet hot coated, <laughs> and the exhaust manifold was also port matched to the cylinder head and the competition head gasket. So it's all blended so it will breathe easily. We have a pair of early MGB HS4 carburetors, inch and a half, and I opted for the earlier version because it's going to appear more period correct for his MGA application. So I chose an earlier manifold that I cleaned and polished up for him. Uh, so we didn't um, encounter some of the extra vacuum ports and all that that would have been present on a later manifold. They're HS4 carburetors, and once again, the intake manifold has been port matched to the cylinder head. So we've got all the stock, um, stock linkage all hooked up and ready to go. The carburetors are rebuilt, um, new needles and seats and, and new throttle shafts and new throttle shaft bushings. The air cleaners are new. Um, everything's cleaned and polished and, and um, pre-adjusted. I pre-adjusted, because it's a street performance engine, I pre-adjusted the jets down 65 thousandths, which should be a fairly good starting point for fuel mixture for initial startup. Are so those, th that will be close. And then... And then um, Do I have spacers here? Did that come with my... I don't recall these. Yeah. Oh yes, they're that's, factoring. That's stock. I don't. All right. So I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. Yep. It's been so long since it took mine apart. So the carburetors are pre-adjusted now. Of course, Chris will have to adjust the idle speed screws here mm -hmm. and here, mm -hmm. and he'll have to also adjust the fast idle screws, which are down under here. When we activate the choke, those need to abut the cam on the choke linkage. So Chris will be able to do that. 
In the meantime, on this side of the engine, uh, I supplied a, a good used original 25D distributor, which we sent off to Jeff Schremer, and it is all Schremerized and freshly rebuilt, <laughs> specifically for these engine specifications. I do a fair number of engines to these specs, and so Jeff knows very well uh, just how to build these um, distributors to suit my particular build. So we've got a freshly rebuilt Schlemmerized distributor, new spark plugs, new plug wires. Uh, we've got the inverted oil filter adapter with a purulator filter. We've got a high torque starter motor, which is the smallest high torque starter motor I'm aware of. And because of that, that should present the the least amount of problems for installation into an MGA chassis. May still require a little modification, but this is, this is our best chance at doing that. Now also we have a brand new alternator, higher output than, than stock. What kind of uh, uh, amperage out does it do? 40 amps. 40, okay. Yes, stock is 35 or 36, I forget what. Yeah. So this is, this is 40, and um, we've got it since, um, since uh, Chris wanted to plug and play, then I've also set it up with original, new original motor mounts for his, um, uh, for his MGA with the correct configuration, bolts, and all new hardware. We fitted this with a later, now available for Moss, yellow plastic fan mm -hmm. because that provides excellent cooling. It's very quiet and it does a really nice job. We did look at the uh, the option of an, of an electric fan and found out that there's no space in there. Yes, there's no space, and this should be plenty. Yep. This should be plenty. This is the fan that I recommend for all my street performance engines. Now, we know that the MGA has a slightly smaller grill opening, but I believe that's going to be offset by the efficiency of, the, of this fan. Mm -hmm. So I think this is going to work just fine. With a new Moss uh, Classic Gold cast iron water pump, it's the upgraded water pump, and an alloy rocker cover. Yeah. Yeah. And then on this side we have the other motor mount, and I've also pre-fitted it with a braided ground strap to show exactly where that needs to be installed mm -hmm. when the car is dropped into the chassis. Okay. So that's pretty much the engine as it is. Okay. And then we move on to the overdrive transmission. Oh. This is a four synchro LH uh, black label. Hey, just run quick. Drive. What year did this engine come out of? I don't know. Don't know. But it would be circa 1969. Oh wow! Okay. Circa 1969. The engine tag was missing when I got that engine, so I don't know exactly. We need to put a Dick Moore special tag on that thing. Honestly. Uh, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. I've got some ideas for you. So we move on to the gearbox. It's a it's a it's a black label four synchro overdrive gearbox completely rebuilt um, uh, typically they would have been natural aluminum finish from the factory with maybe some black overspray on it they seem to just blow some black all over it um, but Chris, Chris's preference was for to have it painted so we painted it all up for him but it's completely rebuilt we've got new synchros we've got new bearings in the main gearbox the overdrive is completely rebuilt with uh, all new seals and gaskets, and uh, uh, it's been test run on my bench tester. I always run it for six hours, so I can gauge my operating pressures and calibrate the overdrive. And this overdrive I've got set spec is 400 to 420 PSI, and this is dead nuts on at 425. So it's rock solid right at the upper end of the limit. And it is a black label, so the overdrive isolation switch does allow overdrive in third and fourth. And that's just what a, a, a ground in or a power out or? It's, 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 it's very simple wiring of, uh, and all we need is any kind of a switch. Because it's a four synchro, the, the solenoid draws less than one amp, only about 800 milliamps. So because of that, the, the current draw is so very light that you can locate any kind of an on off switch anywhere you want and any switch will be strong enough and any wiring will be strong enough to handle this. The original and your car, what year is your car? 60? 58. A 58. So you could use an early MGB Shepherd's Crook type switch on the dash. You could get a Lucas toggle switch. You can hide the switch under the dash if you want. So all we need is power, 
into the switch, mm -hmm. power out of the switch to one of these two terminals, mm -hmm. power from this terminal to the solenoid wire, which is over here, okay. and that's all you need. So, so doesn't, we, doesn't one of those solenoid wires just get plugged in? I'm sorry? Yeah, male bullet connector. From there to, to part of the, the switch, right? Hmm? Yes, this gets wired with a separate wire from one of these terminals there we go. to okay. here. And then from power to your switch, from your switch to one of these terminals, either one, because it's just a direct continuity switch. So we've got power, switched power in, and then power out to the solenoid. Perfect. And then the mechanism is inside the gearbox that allows overdrive in third and fourth gears. So that's all an internal feature. And this is an identical switch. This is for backup lights, which the MGB, MGA would not have. But a lot of folks like the Jaguar E-type separate rectangular back, backup light hanging from the back. Mm -hmm. And so it would be simple enough to simply wire a circuit through this switch and wire it straight back if you chose to add on a backup light mm -hmm. switch. What about that one there? What's that? Uh, this, is from, this tower is from a later car, and you will not use this at all. What was it for? Uh, that would have been for the um, um, uh, vacuum advance, which was only allowed in the later cars in fourth gear only. Gotcha. But you will not use that switch at all. Okay. Uh, this is present here. This is where uh, wiring would attach coming back from the front for the backup light switch and then up and over to the uh, overdrive isolation switch. They're not connected electrically, but there would be, there's a, there's a, overdrive wiring harness available from Moss for about 28 bucks for, oh, like 68 to 74, uh, 68 to 76 overdrives. So that would have the harness with two male spade connectors for here, and then it would also include two male spade connectors for here, and also a pigtail to connect to the solenoid. So for 28 bucks, you can have something that looks very factory. Huh. Okay. And, and other uh, than that, it's all bench tested and uh, ready to go. And I've got a drive shaft that uh, that uh, matches this, right? Yes. Uh huh. We have the, the output shaft yoke, which I left separate for transport. And then I've also got a drive shaft for you and uh, a cross member. And it just screws in? This attaches here. Yep. And then the front of the drive shaft is spined oh, to go into here, right, yeah. and then there's a collar that threads on here to retain the front of the drive shaft. Got it. So that goes like that, and then the drive shaft connects to the rear differential. My goodness. So I, 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 I just want to shake your hand and say thank you very much. I am very, very excited by this. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this. This has more impetus to get my dang body finished up and painted. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah, I am well. home. Uh, without incident, I, I, I might add. Uh, had it all tied down really well. A couple of uh, straps everywhere. And I'm about to chain fall it onto my garage floor.